this video focuses on the wrist and the hand. As always, we are first going to explain the palpatory anatomy and the reference points that we will be using throughout the video and then we are going to see the joint mobilization of uh, both joints. We know that the anatomy of the hand is quite complex, but I'll try to make it as easy as possible. We know that the arm is made of the radius and the ulna on the other side. The styloid process is quite visible here. By doing an ulnarization of the wrist, it comes out clear. From there, we know that right after we have the radiocarpal joint. The first bone articulated is the scaphoid. So we know that anteriorly to the radius we have the scaphoid. In the medial area, that is right here, from this angle is clearer, we find the styloid process of the ulna and we know that we are right on the pyramidal bone. And by flexing the wrist, we can see that the first row of the carpus is quite visible. It's the line that I'm showing with my index. So that's the first row of the bones of the carpus. Right after, we will have the second row, third row, and so on. So here we can see first and second row, and that's the area of the carpus with all the bones. Once we locate the carpus, we find right after the first metacarpus and we know that it is articulated with the trapezius. It is quite easy to locate. Let's now move on to the radiocarpal mobilization. So it's a joint that is in between the radius and the carpus. So the styloid process is right here and what do we do? We do a bracelet grip right on the wrist on the radio ulnar part. The other hand goes right on the carpus. In this way we have our hand on the distal part of the arm whereas the carpus in our left hand and the movements that we can do with the radiocarpal joint are quite a lot so in, in this case I'm doing a gliding I'm doing a sort of up and down from this position I try to look for the micro movement not the typical flexion abduction or adduction of the wrist but I want to do a micro gliding because we know that the smallest movements in big joints make a difference. It is quite easy to see the movement. We are not going to do a decoaptation, but just these movements that I am showing in the video. Let's now see another kind of mobilization that is the opening of the carpus, sort of splitting the carpus into parts. We are trying to mobilize all the bones of the carpus in one single technique. We know that the carpus has eight bones because mobilizing each of the bones is quite difficult. So like this we can have a global, a comprehensive grip and we can mobilize all the joints of the carpus. They usually glide and slide because they are called arthrodias. So we put our thumbs on the, on the palm and the other fingers support the, the dorsal part of the carpus. So with the lateral and the medial thumb, we sort of split the carpus. This is very useful for the carpal tunnel syndrome. I know that the medial nerve passes right under the transversal ligament and what I do is also sort of stretching the transversal ligament and that's the characteristic of this technique because with one technique we can mobilize all the bones of the carpus 
and also relax a bit the transversal ligament of the carpus it is very clear from the video it is a technique that mainly gives relief while you do it gives quite big pleasure and then it gives relief to carpal tunnel syndromes Let's now see another mobilization that is also very useful and that gives relief to many many people, especially to those who use the mouse a lot or who spend a lot of time at their computers. So this mobilization can give great relief and it's called trapezio metacarpal mobilization. Of course, we needed to focus on the trapezio metacarpal joint that is what makes us differ from our ancestors, the apes. So, by using our first finger and this joint, we could evolve and we were able to do so many things that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So, the possibility to oppose the first finger with the thumb made us evolve, but it also led to an overloading of the joint. How do we do the mobilization? So we need to look uh, for the reference points here, the first metacarpal. Right after we know that there is a very small bone that is the trapezius that I'm pointing out now, it's right this uh, dimple here. This joint has a great ROM and now I'm doing this mobilization. So one hand goes right on the trapezius, the other hand, the left one in this case, mobilizes the first metacarpal. So we can see that this kind of mob mobilization is a flexion and an extension, but we can also rotate it. It's a joint that allows us a great ROM and great mobilization in all the plans of the space. And the trapezius is somehow blocked with my thumb, because with my thumb I block it first, but I also feel the movement. It's a sort of limitation because if with my left hand I'm mobilizing too much the first metacarpal, I can feel it with my thumb. Instead, if it's too blocked, I can understand which movement to emphasize more in order to mobilize the right spot.